If you wanna use Google Sheets in your Python application, this is the video for you. We're gonna set up a GCP project, grab some credentials for the Google Sheets API, and run sentiment analysis on our Google Sheets data in Python. So hello world, this is Google for Devs, and I'm Blondie Bytes. I make videos on my channel about Java, Python, and other software engineering topics. With that out of the way, let's build this app. To get started, we'll set up a Google Cloud Platform project. We'll call this Sheet Analysis Tutorial. Then we'll need to enable the Google Sheets API. Let's search for that at the top. We'll click Enable. We'll also want to enable the Cloud Natural Language API. This will let us do our sentiment analysis. With those two enabled, we'll create our API key. We'll go to Credentials, Create API Key. This is how we'll authenticate to these two APIs. We'll want to save this for later. It's important to note that with this type of authentication, our API will only work with public Google Sheets. If we wanted it to work with private Google Sheets, we'd need to use OAuth authentication. OAuth is an authentication protocol that allows applications to access user data without exposing user credentials, whereas an API key is just a simple key that grants you access to the API. Now, in order to connect to Google data, we'll be using Google Libraries. These are built-in toolkits that make it easier to access Google data. Let's head to the terminal. To install these libraries, we'll use pip. Here, we're installing two dependencies, the Google API Python client, which allows us to make requests to the various Google APIs, and the Google Cloud language library. This is for our sentiment analysis. Now to the code. We already have some starter code, and I'll link this down below. Let's walk through it. First, we have some imports and some key variables. We'll use these throughout the Python script. Here, we'll paste in our API key. Now, typically, you would not put your API key in plain text like this. It allows anyone to use your key and act as you when accessing the API. I'll be deleting my API key from the Google Console after this video, so I've put it here for simplicity. This spreadsheet ID references the Google Sheet we'll be accessing data from. This is what our spreadsheet looks like. It has a username and a review comment for each row. Using sentiment analysis, we can find out whether the given comment is positive or negative, and we can use that data to see if the majority of the comments about the product are positive or negative. This will give us a sense of how our product is received on a broad scale. Now back to our code. Here we have two helper functions one that takes in our API key and authenticates us to the Google Sheets API, and another that does sentiment analysis given a piece of text using the Google Cloud Language API. This sentiment analysis is called in our main function. For each row in our Google Sheet, we'll process the username, the review comment, and the sentiment score, which is calculated based on the review comment's text. Then we calculate the average sentiment, giving us an idea of if the product has good or bad reviews overall. To make this application work, we need to connect our Google Sheets data and save it in the values variable. Let's do this. First, we'll use our helper method from above. We'll pass in our API key variable. That's what we set at the top. Let's dig into this implementation. We're using the build method to construct a resource for interacting with the Google Sheets API. We're using version four and passing in our API key as the developer key. Then we run dot spreadsheets because we want to return the spreadsheets. Now, how did we know how to do all of this? Well, it's all listed in the Google documentation. Let's search for the build method. And there it is. Here, we can read up on how the build method works and what types of parameters we can pass into it. 
Since we're using the Sheets API, we can go to the Sheets documentation. This is where we got the version 4 and spreadsheets. Let's look at the REST API. This shows the different ways we can access our data. We want to retrieve the review comments, so we'll want to return a range of values from the spreadsheet. It looks like this get will work for us. Let's check it out. Here, it looks like we can pass in a spreadsheet ID and a range and get back the values in that range. With this documentation, we can see how we would access the data in the form of an HTTP request, but not so much in the form of our client library. So let's open up client libraries, Python, and API library. This gives us a more Pythonic way to access the data. So we've already accessed the spreadsheets resource. In our code, that's when we did dot spreadsheets. Now we want to retrieve the values of the resource. So we'll click values and then our get method. Let's take a look at this. These are the only two parameters required. So let's use it. We'll save our authenticated sheets in a variable called sheets and then run sheets.values.get spreadsheet ID and range. Now in order to execute this request, we'll need to do dot execute. Now what does this function return? Well, it returns an object with a major dimension, a range, and values. The values are what we want, so we'll retrieve that from our results. We'll say our values are going to be results.getValues, and if they don't exist, we'll default to an empty list. All right, let's run it. I've been saving this code in app.py, so that'll be the file I run. In the output, we can see each comment being given a sentiment analysis number. A positive number is a good sentiment, and a negative number is a bad sentiment. Most of the reviews are positive, so we get a positive number for the average. Overall, people like our product. Let's look back at our code. Here, we used an API key for our authentication. An API key is straightforward and convenient which is good for exploring an API's functionalities. However, it doesn't have much security or access control granularity. To account for that, you can use a service account instead. This is like a wrapper object around an API key. A service account typically represents a non-human user, allowing applications to interact with Google Cloud APIs on behalf of the user or the service itself. All right, so that's it for this video. With 47 lines of code, we were able to retrieve data from our Google Sheet and run sentiment analysis on it to drive product ratings. To expand on this application, you can add user input so that the user could input the Google spreadsheet ID of their choice. You can also save the sentiment analysis rating into the Google Sheet. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed experimenting with Google's APIs with me. I'll see you next time and happy coding.